Our father has given uh, two quotations from the Bible, the Gospel of John. And he rightly said the Gospel does say in several places, Jesus Christ himself said that I am. He didn't give the reference number, I am giving the reference number. It is Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 6 says, For I am the light, the truth and the way. No man cometh unto my father but by me. That is the quotation father was referring to. Uh, and several other quotations, I am. I cannot say I had many quotations. Jesus Christ said, I am and father is one. In That's John, uh, Gospel of John, chapter 17, verse 20. It is so not chapter 17, verse 20. It's chapter 10, verse number 30. You, you Check it out. The, the Bible is here. And my father of one is not in Gospel of John chapter 17, it's in Gospel of John chapter number 10 verse number 30. You can check we it up, Father. Can refer, we can refer. Yes, you can refer, I'm sure of it. Chapter 17. I am quoting chapter 17, verse 20 and 21. Neither pray for these alone, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Father, you said, I and my father are one. Now open chapter 10, verse number 30 and read that, Father, please. Pardon? Open chapter 10 and verse number 30. Which one? You said that Jesus Christ said, I and my father are one. Verbatim, that statement is given in Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 30. Can you open it, Father, and read it for the people? I just read the, what I said, the, chapter 17. Father, the thing is being recorded. What you said, Jesus Christ said, I and my father are one. That statement is not there in Gospel of John, chapter 17, verse 20. Now open Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse number 30. The, that statement will be there. You read so many words. We are quoting different text and we can quote so many texts from the... I'm sorry, Bible. Father, you, you made the statement, I and my father are one. Yes. If you open Gospel of John, chapter 10 and read it to the public, they will understand. Chapter? Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 30. John, chapter 10, verse 30. 3 zero. I and my father are one. That, that's the statement you made. It is being video recorded. You said that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, I and my father are one. This is a verbatim statement you had made earlier, but that is found in Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 30. Now to explain this, I will quote both the verses, sister, for a better understanding. And as you said that people can interpret Bible in a different way, I will give you the interpretation which is logical. If you quote Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 30, I and my father are one, it's just out of context. If you read the context and link the verse which father said, about Gospel of John chapter 17, you will get the answer. For context, Father, you have to go to verse number 23. I will quote it from my memory. If I'm quoting wrong, you can correct me, Father. Gospel of John chapter number 10, verse number 23 says that Jesus entered the porch in the temple of Solomon. Verse number 24 says that the Jews surrounded him and they asked him that if thou art the Christ, tell us plainly. Verse number 25 says, I'm quoting, Father. If I'm wrong, you can correct me. Verse number 25 says, I have told you, but you believe not, because you are not my sheep. The work that I do in my Father's name, bear witness of me. Verse number 27. My sheep follow me because they hear me. Next verse. I give them eternal life. No man can pluck them out of my hand. Verse number 29. My Father who giveth them to me, no man can pluck them out of my Father's hand. My Father is greater than all. Fine. Verse number 30 says, I and my father are one. Now if you read the context, the earlier verses say that no man can pluck these people, the followers of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, from his hand. No man can pluck them out of the father's hand. That means God's hand. God Almighty. If you read the context, it means the plucking in purpose. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and God Almighty are same. Suppose I say, my father is a doctor and he's a medical doctor. I am a doctor. In purpose, I and my father are one. But that does not mean one in unity. If you mean it means one in unity, then I have to go back to your verse which you quoted rightly. John chapter 17, verse, which, verse number 21, 20 to 23, which says that if you agree that one means God Almighty and Jesus Christ claim divinity. If it means that you'll have to agree, according to John chapter 17, verse 21, 23, Jesus Christ said that I am in my Father. My Father is in me. I am in you, he's telling the apostles, that means, if you say, in one means God Almighty is same as Jesus Christ, then according to John chapter 17, verse 21-23, you'll have to believe even the apostles are God Almighty. 
So do you believe in 12 plus Jesus Christ plus God Almighty to be 14 gods? No. So if you say I and my one means Jesus Christ claimed divinity, Jesus Christ also said I am in my father, my father is in me, I am in you. You read the verse you quoted. John chapter 17 verse 21 23. It says that Jesus Christ is in the apostles. Does it mean that Jesus Christ as God Almighty is in the apostles? Are the apostles also God Almighty? No. It means one in purpose. It means one in purpose. That means Jesus Christ had delivered the same message of God Almighty and the apostles of Jesus Christ also delivered the same message which Jesus Christ peace be upon him preached. And further if you read John chapter 10 verse number 31. It says that the Jews picked up stones to stone Jesus Christ. I'm reading Father. Verse number 32 says that for which of my good works do you stone me? So Jews tell him, we don't stone you for good work. We stone you because you being a man, you blaspheme, saying that you are God. So then Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, verse number 34, 35 says that it is said in your law and scriptures that ye are God. And if you say to a person God, to whom the word of God has come, the law is not broken. And if you read the Psalms, the 82nd Psalm, verse number 6 says that ye are gods. Whoever are led by the Spirit of God, they are called as gods. The Spirit is not broken. So Jesus Christ said that if you call to a person to who the word of God has come, then the law is not broken. He never claimed divinity. Read the context. You could read one more verse that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said he was son of God. You didn't give the reference, I'll give the reference. Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse number 16. Say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe within him shall not die but have everlasting life. Now the father said that Bible mentions that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, son of God. If you refer, Bible also says that Adam is son of God, Ephraim is son of God, David is son of God. Bible has got son of God by the tons. Anyone who is led by the spirit of God is a son of God. That's what the Bible says. Means if you are a good person, following the rules and regulation of God Almighty, then you are son of God, we are children of God. But the Christians say no, he is not only a son of God, he is the begotten son of God. And they quote John chapter 3 verse number 16, as father said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not die but have everlasting life. Now this Bible which I'm quoting is from King James Version and also present in the Douay Version which the Catholics believe. And the Father rightly said the Catholics believe in 73 books. And the Protestants, they have thrown out seven books from the Old Testament saying it's Apocrypha. The masses of the people don't know the meaning of Apocrypha. It means doubtful. Apocrypha. They have thrown out seven books from the Old Testament saying it's doubtful. The Bible with the King James Version and the other Douay version, they go back to the source about 300 to 500 years after the alleged crucifixion of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. According to the Revised Standard Version, the Revised Standard Version goes back 200 years after the alleged crucifixion of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Closer to the source, more authentic is the source. And according to the Revised Standard Version, which has been revised by 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 different cooperating Christian denominations. The Bible has... This a is the Revised Standard Version. This is the Revised Standard Version, revised by 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating denominations. If you open Gospel of John chapter 3, verse number 16, the word begotten is not there. Because it's an interpolation, it's a concoction. It's a fabrication. Who says that? Not the Muslims. The 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 corporate denominations. Even the RSV of the Catholic edition, the word begotten is not there. Why? It is an interpolation. It's a concoction. And the Quran rightly says, They say Allah has begotten a son. It is indeed a most monstrous thing to say. As though the skies are ready to burst open. And the earth to split asunder. And the mountains to fall down to utter ruin. If anyone says that Allah has begotten a son, it's the biggest abuse you can give. As though the skies are ready to burst, the earth to split asunder. 
and the mountain to fall down to utter ruin. Maybe these three to scholars of the highest eminence, they read the verse of the Holy Quran, Surah Maryam, chapter 19, verse number 88 and 92, and they threw out the word begotten from the Bible. It's no longer there in the Revised Standard Version. This is the Revised Standard Version. You can verify if you want, Father. So yet, there is no statement in the whole Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself said that he is God or worship me.